I am a 44-year-old citizen, and I live in Monchique, Portugal, Algarve. Last year we suffered many fires in this region. In several cases firefighters arrived late, or were not able to reach the urgent places in the case of large and impassable forests. I am convinced that the forests being cleaned the damage part may decrease. And some of our companions have a small company and we work on the cleaning of your forests in the Monchique domain. We are Monchique New Discovery Company, with a history of 15 years of experience with the environment in which the objectives have been overcome. Our company has in mind to later work with GPS and infrared cameras, but at the moment it is necessary equipment and transport with water pump equipment, tank and brush cutters. We would like to increase our services and be ready soon in the start of a fire, and with our equipment, and no slash no matter at the beginning of the flight. Your company gave us an aid, and so there could be a mutual return, that could benefit the people with our presence, and better conditions in the cleaning of the most important places of your woods. Our company has in mind, to later work with GPS and infrared cameras, but at the moment it is necessary equipment and transport with water pump equipment, tank, and grinders. Because the growth of the fire cases, and the increase in requests for repairing solutions are among the objectives of our company, we are convinced that we can help in the battle against fires, then my skills will possibly be of interest to you. For the contribution of these new objectives in the hope of your excellences, to provide a little support for the materials we need to start working on the ground. Among the other advantages, that after the fact, that we also want to buy a drone, two photo cameras, two pairs of binoculars. We can give a good coverage in the surveillance of these points of work. I will await your reply with the best cordial greetings, Monchik 20-02-2018, Helder da Silveira Ventura 2- Degrees Report 28-08-2018. Fire in the Monchi area is once again headline news. Thankfully no human lives were lost, but the area has been devastated, and so many people have lost so much. Despite several announcements that the fire was almost under control, there seemed to be no information, little or no advice, and for some people no warning. We first knew of the fire when we were contacted by our son who lives the other side of Monchi. Every year. There are several fires in this heavily wooded area, but this was several miles from us. For two days our valley was full of smoke and ash, we knew it must be big. As we live in an area surrounded by hills we could not see the fire, but had been assured by the authorities, that we would be warned, if it came near us. As pensioners living in an isolated area with only one entrance slash exit, we were down on their list of vulnerable people, on the third day of the fire, the smoke and ashes suddenly increased and the phone lost reception. We were seriously worried. Police cars were driving by on the road opposite our valley, but none came to tell us to leave. We started watering around the house copiously, just in case. When it happened it was incredibly quick. Flames appeared in three directions on top of the hills and rapidly bore down towards us as huge eucalyptus on neighboring land went up. In seconds it was at the edge of our land. The sheer size of the flames, the wind and the roar of the flames was terrifying. We had to flee for our lives, with no time to do anything but grab our three cats and dog and drive out on the only road not burning towards S. Marcus da Serra. We came upon a police road block about 250 m away, stopping people entering an area, they were shocked when we came up behind them, they thought the area had been evacuated. We had been forgotten. Further up the road we stopped at a roadside bar, where a few other evacuees had gathered. We once again had phone reception, and rang our son, who was shocked, that no one had warned us as he had been specially to see them. GNR, protect our civil and segu rank as social, to remind them. We now had another problem. With a dog and three cats in the car, two of the cats loose, so we called and he opened the windows, we were all starting to overheat, and, needed to get to our son's house which was still safe. 
no road this side of Monchik was open, we had to drive up to S. Marcus da Serra then down to Silves, Portimao, then up the back roads the other side of Monchik. It took nearly two hours and we were exhausted. We were finally able to put our stressed out animals in a cool room to recover. However, our ordeal was not yet over. After a sleepless night and an unsuccessful attempt to get home the next day, we still had no idea if our house was still standing or not. The following morning we were woken at 5 a.m. by police sirens and loud hailers telling everyone that the fire was coming and we would have to leave. At least, this time we had ample warning and there was no panic. Having hastily bought more cat boxes there would be no loose cats in the car this time. But where could we go? We knew no one who could house our animals. Most people we know live in this area, and were probably evacuated too. There was little information on anything, and most roads were still closed. We ended up going to stay with a friend the other side of Lagos, another long and hot journey. It was another three days before we again tried to get home after rumors that one road might be open. Most of the way home, we drove through blackened hills and were shocked at the extent of the damage. We drove past the burnt-out house of someone we knew, and another half-destroyed house belonging to other friends. Acres of orange groves and natural woodland have been destroyed along with the eucalyptus forests. Thankfully, our own house was still standing, along with a circle of green, where we had watered before we left. The hills all around and our entire valley was black, even the trees along the river's edge. Most of our fruit trees and vegetable garden were burnt. Our pipes were burnt, and there was no water in the house. Amazingly our solar panels were intact, and we must have been one of the few houses in the area to still have electricity. Our water pump down by the river, and surrounded by blackened trees was also intact, although a fuel container right beside it was ashes. We set about connecting up bits of pipe, to get water run in the house and try to save what was left of our garden which was now rapidly drying out. He had spent 30 years making our garden, planting fruit trees and growing our own vegetables. We had saved up for and installed a semi-automatic watering system to make my husband's work a little easier. We are no longer young. Now we have years of hard work ahead of us to get back anything like that which we once had. Our whole valley, once beautiful and full of life, is black and silent, the smell of soot in the air. There are no birds. The only life that seems to have survived is horse flies and mosquitoes. Ours is the only place left for them to go now. We put the entire blame for this disaster on vast swathes of eucalyptus planted throughout the hills. Someone once wrote to the Portugal News defending these trees naively pointing out that it was not eucalyptus that started fires, it was people. This was not the point. The point is, can the fires be put out? In our climate, there will always be fires started by people, whether accidentally or on purpose. Eucalyptus are huge trees and burn explosively. Usually there is a thick layer of leaves, bark and twigs on the forest floor, all highly flammable and the authorities do not demand that the owners of these forests clear this debris away. Instead they make property owners clear around their houses. This may help to some extent, but it does not protect one's property from falling embers. We know several people who, like us, spent months clearing around their property, only to find it burnt out anyway. Several years ago, there was a movement to stop the eucalyptus planting and plant more indigenous trees, especially cork oaks. Cork oaks, in particular, do not burn easily or rapidly, and are much smaller than eucalyptus. They are also a lot better for the environment. A cork oak forest fire would be a lot easier to put out than a eucalyptus forest. Even if the firemen had made it to our valley they would not have been able to put out such a huge fire. No one will be safe here until people come before the profit of a few, and the authorities ban the planting of eucalyptus, and destroy the big forests.